Intel has finally launched their second Battle Mage GPU, a new entry into the 500 series line, Intel's first 10 gigabyte entry into the discrete GPU market. Today we are taking a look at the hash rates for the Intel Arc B570. This particular model is the ASRock Challenger Edition and looks pretty underwhelming. It features 18 XE cores and can reach a clock speed of up to 2600 megahertz out of the box, which in theory should perform slightly worse than the B580 in core intensive algorithms. On the memory side of things, it features 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 clocked at 19 gigabits per second on a 160 bit bus, which results in a bandwidth of 380 gigabytes per second. This can be increased to over 400 gigabytes a second with overclocking. Depending on the bin quality, the overclocking slider can reach 22 gigabits per second. However, my particular sample would crash with any overclock attempt. Your mileage may vary. Powering the GPU is a single 8-pin PCIe power adapter which can deliver up to 250 watts to the GPU with a recommended power supply of 600 watts. The, the total board power is 150 watts. For testing, I utilize the Thermaltake HCG 1000 watt PSU and at these loads it provides 87% efficiency. Keep this in mind as all power is calculated at the wall. To be clear, the riser and the card are powered by a separate PSU from the rest of the system for accurate readings. I have recently upgraded the risers to Oculink for more lanes resulting in more bandwidth so I can test things like Warthog at full bandwidth. Cooling the cards are two striped axial fans over a true copper base in a push-through configuration. ASRock's new cooler design is using nano thermal paste, which while is a new technology in actual thermal paste for the die, has been commonly used in marketing to refer to thermal putty on the memory modules. I will do a teardown to confirm this later on, so stay tuned for that. For testing operating systems, HiveOS, MMPOS, and Fedora 41 were tested However, even when picked up, they were not capable of overclocking. For this reason, I built a Tiny11 ISO and tested on Windows. Now that we have the overview out of the way, let's discuss stock hash rates. There are currently only two officially supported miners in Wild Rig and SRB Miner, with BZ Miner having some algos compatible that compile OpenCL on start. On Asterix Hash, which is a core intensive algorithm, SRB Miner made 41 mega hash a second at 180 watts, resulting in 0.23 mega hash a second per watt. While the B580 worked on both BZ Miner and SRB Miner for Autolikos V2, the B570 worked on SRB Miner only, mining at 29 mega hash a second at 173 watts, resulting in 0.23 mega hash a second per watt, outperforming its bigger brother in efficiency but still feeling pretty meh. ETC hash was another disappointing result from a memory intensive algorithm perspective. The B570 got 9 mega hash a second at 136 watts resulting in an ugly 0.06 mega hash a second per watt. ET hash B3 makes me question the performance of the Autolikos V2 and ETC hash, as the B570 gets much more respectable hash rates of 18 mega hash a second at 125 watts for an efficiency of 0.14 mega hash a second per watt. Clearly, ET hash and ETC hash should be on par with this result. So what I'm saying essentially is because we have a good performing ET hash sample that usually gets the same as all other ET hash algros, but that support for that algorithm was added later. There's something wrong with the older uh, legacy support of ET hash on these GPUs. And I have reached out to IE doc from BZ Miner to go ahead and help me figure out why. On fish hash, which is another memory intensive algorithm, SRB Miner made 14 mega hash a second at 130 watts, resulting in 0.1 mega hash a second per watt, performing significantly worse than its bigger brother, the B580. On heavy hash, which is core intensive algorithms, two miners worked, SRB Miner and Wild Rig, with Wild Rig performing the best, getting 54 mega hash a second at 176 watts, resulting in 0.3 mega hash a second per watt. A highly demanded algorithm was Who Hash, which is another core intensive algorithm. Using SRB Miner, I saw 289 mega hash a second at 180 watts, resulting in 1.6 mega hash a second per watt. 
outperforming its bigger brother in the B580. The pattern appears to be better in core intensive algorithms over the B580, which is a surprise. On Carlson hash, which is a memory intensive algorithm, two miners worked, BZ minor and SRB minor, with SRB minor winning that with 15 mega hash a second at 130 watts, resulting in 0.12 mega hash a second per watt. On Kapow, the B570 got 17.4 mega hash a second at 180 watts, resulting in an efficiency of 0.09 mega hash a second per watt. On meme hash, wild rig is getting 10 mega hash a second at 136 watts, resulting in a disappointing 0.07 mega hash a second per watt. On Nexa proof of work, which uses a little memory and core, only wild rig was supported with 5.5 mega hash a second at 151 watts, resulting in 0.036 mega hash a second per watt. On Nexel hash, which uses core, SRB miner is mining at 89 mega hash a second at 180 watts, resulting in 0.49 mega hash a second per watt. On Phi hash, which is another core intensive algorithm, Wild Rig achieves 17.7 mega hash a second at 180 watts, resulting in 0.098 mega hash a second per watt. On SHA-256DT, which is another core intensive algorithm, the SRB miner is mining at 1,511 1, mega hash a second at 151 watts, resulting in 10 mega hash a second per watt. Another example of the B570 performing better than its bigger brother in the B580. On SkyDoge, Wild Rig is mining at 1.9 mega hash a second at 130 watts, resulting in 0.15 mega hash a second per watt. On vert hash, which uses core and memory, SRB miner achieved 258 kilohash a second at 115 watts, resulting in 2.24 kilohash a second per watt. On Warthog, it is important to note that we are looking at the GPU hash rate only tests. Both the Oculink riser and direct on board were performed to ensure total bandwidth was available to the CPU. Both scenarios had identical results with 8.9 gigabytes of bandwidth being given to the GPU and resulted in 939 mega hash a second at 148 watts, resulting in 6.3 mega hash a second per watt. Before getting to overclocking, it is important to note I attempted dual mining on BZ Miner with very little success at this time. The original Arc series eventually got support, so when the support comes, I can follow this up with more testing. Another note is that there are variances between different makes and models, therefore your mileage will vary. But I will cover the basic guidelines before providing specifics. As we know from specs, this B570 has a max boost clock of 2600 MHz and the memory is clocked at 19 gigabits per second out of the box. It is safe to assume that the memory overclocks will be consistent across all makes and models outside of potentially cooling issues. In the case of the GDDR6 on board, the max overclock is 22 gigabits per second. In my particular case, I was not able to increase this at all. Therefore, all algorithms are tested with power level changes only. Unfortunately, overclocking on Battle Mage is still limited, even though they added a voltage curve. This curve never applies in my case, no matter what. The only thing that seemed to work was power level. While you would expect the lowest power level on memory intensive algorithms to be the best, in some cases it bottlenecks the hash rate too much and bumping it up a tad offers better results. With all of that out of the way, let's discuss the results on algorithms that gave significant results. Asterix hash is now mineable with FPGA, but it gives us an idea for speculative mining Casper forks. It did offer better results by dropping power level to 60%, which got 34 mega hash a second at 110 watts, resulting in 0.31 mega hash a second per watt for a 35% increase in efficiency over stock. As you all know, ET hash B3 is similar to both ETC and ET hash, however, due to how long ago most devs put in support for these algorithms, the card is resulting in auto leakos like issues. 
Theoretically, both algos would have similar results to ET hash B3, which does perform closer to expectations. And in this, I was able to turn the power down to 47%. With this, I achieved 16.3 mega hash a second at 90 watts, resulting in 0.18 mega hash a second per watt, netting a 25% increase in efficiency over stock. Unfortunately, this places it below even Polaris GPUs along with the B580. Since there was no ability to overclock memory, Fish Hash was best at 60% power level, failing at 47%, resulting in 14.8 mega hash a second at 112 watts, resulting in 0.13 mega hash a second per watt for a 22% increase in efficiency over stock. Heavy hash, while core intensive and only utilizing 11% of the memory, liked over underclocking the power level to 60% for 45.2 mega hash a second at 110 watts, resulting in 0.41 mega hash a second per watt for a 33% increase in efficiency over stock. Who hash, while core intensive, liked underclocking the power level to 60% as well for 206 mega hash a second at 112 watts, resulting in 1.83 mega hash a second per watt for a 14% increase in efficiency over stock. As a standalone algorithm, the Battlemage GPUs compete well with the 30 series GPUs in efficiencies. However, that would be impressive if the current AMD GPUs were not three to four times more efficient than the 30 series GPUs on WhoHash. Carlson Hash has moved to a more memory intensive algorithm, and this is apparent when turning the power level down to 47% to get 13 mega hash a second at 90 watts for an efficiency of 0.14 mega hash a second per watt, which is a 25% gain in efficiency over stock. Kapow is a beast and requires basically the highest core and memory overclocks available typically. Setting the power level at 70% for a hash rate of 15.7 mega hash a second at 129 watts results in 0.12 mega hash a second per watt, which is a 24% increase in efficiency. As far as traditional algorithms, Battlemage series keeps up with the competition here on efficiency, but still not recommended as you should be expecting at least 0.15 mega hash a second per watt. Meme hash benefited from decreasing the power level to 47% for 7.8 mega hash a second at 90 watts, resulting in 0.08 mega hash a second per watt for a 17% increase in efficiency over stock. Nexa Proof of Work benefited from conservative clocks with a power level of 60% for 4.8 mega hash a second at 112 watts, resulting in 0.04 mega hash a second per watt for a 17% increase in efficiency over stock. Nexel Hash, while core intensive, liked underclocking the power level to 90% for 86 mega hash a second at 162 watts, resulting in 0.53 mega hash a second per watt for an 8% increase in efficiency over stock. Phi Hash, or Phi Hash, however you pronounce it, while core intensive, liked underclocking the power level to 70%. For 16.5 mega hash a second at 132 watts, resulting in 0.13 mega hash a second per watt, for a 16% increase in efficiency in efficiency over stock. Shaw 256DT liked cranking the power level all the way down to 47%, resulting in 1,045 mega hash a second at 88 watts, resulting in 11.8 mega hash a second per watt for an 18% increase in efficiency over stock. Sky Doge benefited from conservative clocks with a power level of 60% for 1.9 mega hash a second at 112 watts, resulting in 0.01 mega hash a second per watt for a 16% increase in efficiency over stock. Vert Hash liked cranking the power level all the way down as well to 40%, 47%, resulting in 255 kilo hash a second at 90 watts, resulting in 2.8 mega hash a second per watt for a 26% increase in efficiency over stock. Walla Hash performed worse than stock, turning the power down to 90%, resulting in 128 mega hash a second at 162 watts, resulting in point eight mega hash a second per watt for a 7% decrease in efficiency over stock. Finally, everyone was asking about Warthog, which utilizes memory and core 
clock, but loved turning the power level down to 47%, giving 664 mega hash a second at 90 watts, resulting in 7.5 mega hash a second per watt for an 18% increase in efficiency. Just like the B580, this was out of nowhere and demonstrated efficiency in total Janus score ha hash rates higher than even an RTX 3090. I presume this is thanks to the additional bandwidth provided by the PCIe 5.0 and resizable bar. I need to test a variety of other GPUs still on Warthog, but initial testing looks pretty good for Battlemage. Taking a look at overclocking performance for the ARC Battlemage GPU, there are a few options to tune and no overclock support in mining operating systems. With only memory clock and power levels available to impact actual performance numbers, it ends up being in an awkward position right now. Coming in at $230 US dollars retail, it would still be advised to go with something else. Unfortunately, the A series, like the A750, have also recently lost performance on memory intensive algorithms. The story with the B570 is similar to that of the B580, with lack of support for mining software and overall disappointing improvements in real time performance. At the end of the month, we will see the launch of the 50 series GPUs from NVIDIA, so stay tuned to the channel for the performance numbers on those. I cannot recommend the B570 at this time for mining unless you are considering Warthog, but in the case of Wart, you may still want to get the BC250. While half the performance in Janus Hash, they are a quarter of the price.